Lebanon was taken from Human League's new album, Hysteria, produced by Chris Thomas. It's their first album for two and a half years. I asked Phil Oakey how he came to write a song about the Lebanon. I tried very hard not to make it about the Lebanon. It was more or less said as a jest because we'd been talking to Chris Thomas about it. Chris is uh, very, very like us politically. And, and we'd been talking about it and, and actually getting, getting a bit upset about it. It was when the, the really bad things were going off in the Lebanon. And Joe brought in a tape, which we all said was just great, as usual. He brought in a tape, he'd started off in Edinburgh, he said, that's fantastic. And Chris said, you could call that the Lebanon, sort of half-jokingly. And after that, I couldn't get it out of my head. While Joe's in Australia, I sat and tried really hard to turn it into a Four Tops song or something. And I couldn't do it. Once it was there, it was stuck. But then I had the problem of, of making sure that it, that it, it wasn't... It didn't take sides too much, which doesn't help. I had to go and sort of, I had to research. I've almost given up reading books since I joined the group, so I had to go and get some books and find out exactly what was happening in the Lebanon. While you were recording that new album, you must have been very aware that the public forget very quickly. We s well, they do forget very quickly, but they do forget certain kinds of people very quickly. If you're pinned down by your image, I think they forget you quickly. They've not forgotten hot chocolate, they've not forgotten the Pink Floyd. People who sort of shun the limelight and just concentrate on making good records. And although we, we did start on an image sort of a thing, we work very hard to go away from it. I think you'll find that I'm the most anonymous sort of, of, the, of the new lead singers. No one knows what I look like. I walk around Sheffield, I've lived in Sheffield for the last ten years. I walk around Sheffield, no one recognises me. You don't do a lot of television, do you? A lot of television appearances. You're very, very choosy about what television programmes you go on, appear on. There's too much pop on television suddenly. There's too many pop groups and there's too many music papers. And it's, it's bringing it all down to a horrible common level. Videos haven't helped. There's too many videos. The new chart, the new Gallup chart hasn't helped. You get twice as many entries now. You work for three months on a single that you care about and scream at your friends about and it comes out if you're lucky it goes up the chart for three or four weeks and then it's disappeared just to join all the other rubbish that's disappeared from the charts I don't think that's very healthy for making great records well you were the first new British pop band to make it in the States did you like the way that you were promoted there by Virgin we weren't promoted there by Virgin we there's been we haven't had any promotion in the States. We've never ever been on a, an American TV show. We've done seven concerts in America. That's it. In our entire existence. We got a number one, basically, without crawling after the Americans like so many groups do. Why haven't you appeared on American television? We had one show and they wanted us to go on with dancers. And we don't require dancers. We've got, we've got the girls who dance about. Uh, dancers on, on TV shows are really for boring groups, aren't they? Like, no, nope, no, it won't do it. Like, no, <laughs> I don't think I will. No. Um, and we, we just don't do it, so we said we're not going on. No one else asked us. Do you, well, how do you think that Don't You Want Me then got into the top of the charts there? Do you think it was hyped or...? It, it's... Everything's hyped in America. Without, you know, if it's a hit, it's hyped in America. It was a success because Americans like storylines and it had a strong storyline. It was a success because Sue sang a verse. She did it very well. She looked great in the video. Do you think it was hyped as well? Everything's hyped in America. How do you feel about that? Um, I don't know, it's not really anything to do with me. You know, we didn't have anything to do with it. We were over here, and sort of, you look in the papers, there you are, number one. I mean, can you tell me the kind of, um, the kind of fruits of success that you got from that one record? I'm interested to know what, when a record is a monster hit worldwide, what comes back? Um, a lot more money in the bank than I ever expected to see, for me, because I, I wrote it. The Human League, we all earn £200 a week each from the Human League, which actually isn't very much nowadays, is it? Um, 
I don't know. I mean, how much money have you got in the bank? Should I tell you? Um, I think it stands at about fifty thousand pounds. Was that from that from one record? No, that's from everything. That's from everything. That's that's what I stand at. I've got a mortgage on a house. I've got a nice house, but I've got that's partly because uh, I got it with Joanne, and we pay half each. When you finally did have hit records, was success everything that you hoped it would be? Um, no, it's the it's it's the thing of you've always had a target, and then suddenly your target's gone. Our first target was to. Um, do well with the synthesizer group. The target was sort of nominally, let's have a number one with an all synthesizer record. And then we did that, and then we had a number one LP, and then we had a number one single in America. And suddenly we were sort of thinking, what have we got to do next? We don't actually have a target. We've reached a level and we've got to stay there. And that's a little bit harder. We all got confused. At the same time, Martin Russian got confused by it. I don't know if we're out of it yet. I think we're just at the last stage. If we can get through the stage now coming up with the LP coming out, you know, sort of waiting for the press backlash, which we've been waiting for now for about four years. Um, if there is one, if we get through that, I think we'll be sort of on, on solid ground. I went out to lunch with some people from Virgin Records on Friday who told me about a couple of people who didn't like it and the reasons why they didn't like it and got me really wound up. I was absolutely terrified. And then we went home and heard a couple of tracks going home on the radio on round table that sounded really bad. And I was absolutely terrified. So I got home and I went into my room and played the album. And it's, I think it's fantastic. It's a, a really great album. It's better than Dare. And Dare was a very good album. Mm. I'm very pleased with it.